one time roulette was banned in the whole of Europe and the only place you could play it was Monte Carlo. Now you can play it on every high street in Britain. Life as a betting shop worker is dominated by those machines these days. I think it's spoiled out of control. That is my view. It's just spoiled out of control. I'm Randy from The Guardian. Nice to meet you. Hello. Can we get an interview with sure you? No, I'm not sure you should be on the stand. Every time we go near a fixed odds betting terminal, we've been chased off a stand. You could call it a revolution. Over the past decade, fixed odds betting terminals have turned old-fashioned bookie shops into high street casinos in front of our eyes. But what is the industry trying to hide? And what is the impact of cramming our high streets with high-speed, high-stakes casino games? So this is a very typical British high street scene. But I'm not talking about the rain. There's always somebody on the machine, on the roulette machine. They're popular, there's no doubt about that. Well, I've seen people put thousands in them and walk out with nothing. What do they do when they lose thousands? Just walk out. Come back the next day and probably put another thousand pound in. So there's a coral over there, a William Mill here, in between them a money shop. The industry has always denied that bookmakers have clustered in poorer areas. Here's a Brett Fred with its neighbour, the pawnbroker. We analyse data from the gambling regulator showing the locations of every bookmaker in Britain. Paddy Power, smashed up window. We found that there were 2,691 in the poorest 55 boroughs, mainly in the north. Betfred. That's more than twice the number in the richest 115 boroughs. So we've got another William Mill here. And Newcastle city centre, it turns out, squeezes in more than anywhere else other than Chinatown. And here's number 16, William Hills. So I make that seven Labrooks, three Betfreds, two Corals, three William Hills, and one Paddy Power, all in the space of less than half a square kilometre. Fixed odds betting terminals, or FOBTs as they are known, are gambling machines that hit the high street betting shops a decade ago. The most common game on them is roulette, and players can bet up to £100 a spin every 20 seconds. Once you place your bets, a random result is then generated on a faraway server. Casino games were not allowed to take place inside betting shops at the time, but technology had outpaced the law. The machine maker's innovation was to argue that while the bet was struck in the shop, the event took place in cyberspace. It is very important that we modernise the regulation of gambling for today's world. New Labour's landmark Gambling Act in 2005 may never have delivered a super casino, but it legitimised and regulated the machines, lifted restrictions on shop opening hours and gambling advertising, right, boys. and ushered in a new era where gambling was no longer a vice, but a legitimate entertainment activity. Bob T's are at the forefront of this increasingly machine-based boom. Shop managers from one of the five big bookie chains have gathered in a pub for a crisis meeting. Once the Fob T's started to really bite in, more violence, there was more abuse to the staff. They're concerned about the rise of Fob T's and the impact on their working environment. It's not the same job. The stress has got a lot worse. Life as a betting shop worker is dominated by those machines these days. Longer hours, earlier opening, later closing. For many years we were discussing horse racing, we were discussing Cheltenham's FA Cups. Some people are happy having their bets on their horses and dogs, they're not interested in the machines. But we are told we have to get new customers on the machines all the time. It's not just the cash that's in their pockets no more. We now take debit card payments, which I think we should never have started. I think it's spoiled out of control. That's, that is my view. It's just spoiled out of control. In response to growing criticism of FOB tea machines, the industry has launched a new code for responsible gambling. But we've learned that concern goes right to the top of government, that the code does not go far enough. The bookies' managers tell us that their company's new pay structure has made a mockery of the code. Basically, there are the three performance indicators, the main one of which is the, the FOB tees. Um, you need to maintain the level of business on your FOB tees or increase it in order to maintain your pay band. 
Um, if you don't, your, your pay will fall even further. But the, the actual pay rates that have been introduced are already meaning massive pay cuts for people already in the job. How do you both prevent players who shouldn't be playing machines from playing them and also prevent, get players to play them in order to get your pay up? Okay. Think, seriously, do you think as a betting shop manager I'm going to say to them, stop paying those machines, you're losing too much money to be downgraded? <laughs> because if I get downgraded, I lose even money. more money. So well, there's some social responsing gambling ethics is bullshit because I am not going to encourage anybody to self-exclude themselves so I get a pay cut. Simple as. They definitely knew that I had a problem with gambling. I was in there at every opportunity. Um, so when you first play it, 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 it is like a kind of rush, you know, um, almost like a drug-like experience. You get into a, almost a trance-like state, I'd say. You lose your awareness of time, and you get caught up in, this, in, in, in the speed in the speed of it. So first, it's exciting, and then, then you just, it's just a kind of numbness, really. And there's a repeat button. And you just keep you just keep pressing that repeat button. Um. Simon got hooked on the machines shortly after they arrived on the high street. Gradually, the rest of your life falls away. And all you think about is the next time you can gamble. I found myself homeless, no money, no job. I, I cashed in my pension. They've caused me to lose everything and have to start again. You can't walk more than 50 or 60 yards without being confronted by the bookies. As you can see adverts in the window, win up to 500 pounds instantly. The National Gambling Helpline. <laughs> For problem gamblers, the ability to bet large amounts of cash at high speed and anonymously is dangerous. For others, it's an opportunity. Drug dealers have been using FOBTs to launder money. With roulette, criminals can limit their losses with a conservative betting strategy. It was a couple of years ago when I first started like, drug dealing, really. I was putting about at least two and a half grand a month into roulette. So how would you minimise your losses? We've been playing like um, two to one bets, basically, playing on third, 12 numbers. And with that we're playing, we're not, normally, we're not looking to lose more than 200 pounds in a day, really. And from that, that would be a way for us to go shopping after that, to go take our winners and go spend it in other legitimate ways. Because if then, if the police came up to us and was like, well, where do you get this from? You can say to them, well, we didn't the other day. We've got our money for a roulette machine, and there's no way for it to prove otherwise. When contacted, the Association of British Bookmakers said their members complied with stringent anti-money laundering regulations in the UK. Betting shops have in place rigorous systems to detect suspicious activity. From organised crime to high streets to late-night TV, gambling has entrenched itself in British life. However, such is the industry's influence that there is very little independent data, research or external scrutiny. A leaked document shows that punters played 5 million sessions on Ladbrook's machines in a one-month period, staking over a billion pounds. Such figures have never been seen before, and the secrecy extends beyond the bookmakers. Simon was asked to be a case study for Gordon Moody, the charity that helped him recover but found they removed all reference to fob teas from his testimony. I introduced it by saying that I became addicted to fob tea machines. They removed that sentence and they sent me an email saying um, they'd had to remove it because they were worried about funding. We also went to Gamcare, the national helpline. They too did not want to talk about fob teas, despite the machines being the biggest reason for calls to their helpline. In response to The Guardian, Gordon Moody in Gamcare said that they concentrated on the underlying causes of gambling addiction, rather than looking at which form of gambling people were addicted to. And we found this revealing report, published in 2011, that confirmed something that the industry always denied, that the number of machines in an area and poverty are linked. The charity that produced the report had its funding pulled and was closed down. A world away from the high street bookmakers, 
the gaming industry gathers for its annual showcase event in London, ICE. So we're looking for these guys. Ex-bookie Steve Freiter and is a business associate, Austrian mathematician Walter Grubmuller. Together, they created an empire. That's SG Gaming. Single-handedly inventing the fixed odds betting terminals, which now take 1.5 billion pounds in profits from British punters on the high street. I'm from The Guardian, Randy Ramish. Right, nice right. to meet you. Me um, is Steve Freiter around? Uh, I haven't seen him, mate, no. Oh, you're Steve Freiter? Yeah, I'm Randy from The Guardian. Nice to meet you. Okay. Hello. Can we get an interview with you? Sure no, I'm not sure you should be on the stand. Why is that? Let me just get... Just get well, I think you need to ask anything? permission to, to come on. Why is that? Perhaps they sense that the mood has turned against the fob T machines. Government is talking about tighter regulations and higher taxes. So what have the machine makers got up their sleeve? Before the order was given not to speak to The Guardian, an executive at SG Gaming gave us this glimpse of the future of betting. You've got every single league of football, ladies volleyball teams and things like that that you can't pronounce the name of. And, and you just think flancier flutter sort of thing, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. And the advantage of this is that unlike the fob tees which are limited to four yeah. a shot, these things you can put as many as you want in. Exactly that, right. yeah. So, so I mean, uh, for example, Betfred, I think they've got 10 in some shops. Oh, really? Um, you know, you could, have a, you could basically set up a bookmaker Get, get your LBO license and just fill, fill the shop with these, have no staff. In, in other words, the government may finally be catching up with the FOB T machines, but the technology races on. Yeah.